Achieving Accuracy During Real-World Encounters Hitting your target in a real firearms engagement is nothing like shooting on the range. Studies of New York City and L.A. police officers found that less than 40% of rounds shot by police during a deadly force encounter hit the assailant. That is less than half of all shots fired. Keep in mind, this statistic includes all hits to the body, not just the upper torso and head area that is taught to officers when training. In fact, some estimates place hits to this area lower than 10%. Why is the upper torso and head region so important? Simple. It is the only area of the body that can cause immediate incapacitation. Looking at the target on the left, this shot placement would penetrate the brainstem. Disruption of the brainstem results in complete shutdown of the central nervous system and brain function. Even if the round does not sever the spinal cord, the pathway from a proximity shot can cause a temporary cavity that will damage or shock the central nervous system causing the brain to shut down. Shots to the lower spine will only affect the nerves that function below the bullet's path. In this case, the individual may lose the ability to ambulate, but could still use their arms and hands to continue to shoot. Looking at the target on the right, if the central nervous system is not hit or affected by the bullet's penetration, the next best targets to achieve incapacitation are major organs. Almost all major organs are located in the upper torso area. In this case, the shots did not hit the spine, but would have damaged the lungs, heart, liver, diaphragm, and pancreas. The results, most certainly, would be lethal. To be an effective warrior, it is essential that shooters train to place their rounds into the upper torso area. The old method of using non-lethal projectiles offered a great solution to recreating stressful encounters. Unfortunately, replicating encounters and improving performance are two radically different concepts. Let me explain. Let's say we ask a student to shoot a target on the range at a distance of 15 feet. Here is how they shot. Would you classify them as an effective shooter? Would they be given a passing grade? We certainly hope not. But if this same student shot in the same manner at a role player during a projectile-based training scenario, they would typically be rewarded by the role player going down. Why? Role players are typically padded with protective clothing or equipment as they will be shot numerous times throughout the training. This also creates a problem with locating where the rounds have struck, as your role player will be covered with marking agent after several scenarios. Let's look at another student. This student's first two shots hit the target, but not in the desired upper torso area. Again, if a role player was struck with these two rounds, they most likely are going to go down, rewarding the student's shooting behavior. Once the rest of the rounds come in, we get a clearer picture of the student's shooting ability. If these are fired at a target on the range from 15 feet, is this an acceptable performance? Finally, let's look at a more advanced student. The shots all fall in the highly desirable upper torso area. This student is certainly outperforming the other two students. However, even though two of the students may fail the combat shoot on the range, all three would be equally rewarded during a projectile-based training scenario. The stress vest is designed to only provide feedback to the role player when rounds are placed in the area that students are trained to shoot. In this way, they are only reinforced for correct shot placement. This discourages spray and prey performance and forces the student to improve their shooting accuracy. The stress vest sensor cap will capture shots to the head and face by capturing the eye-safe laser reflection where it strikes the skin. Back and side panels ensure that shots from oblique angles are captured during dynamic training. When you first introduce stress vest into your reality-based training, don't be shocked to see students' hit ratio drop as low as 20%. This is normal, as they have not previously been forced into the need to display a high level of shot placement. This will change quickly, as we have seen improvement in hit ratios to over 90% with as little as one to two days of advanced training. 
If you want your students to shoot accurately, you must create training that demands they shoot accurately. Remember, the battle isn't won by preparing. The battle is won by preparing properly.